Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Reselling Rhythms. In today's live stream video, I'm going to discuss some news and items that are affecting us as resellers. Every Wednesday, I have a live stream, and I normally interview another reseller, and I have them share their tips, ticks, tips, tricks, and techniques. It's a mouthful <laughs> to help make us more profitable and successful resellers. Today's live stream, I'm going to discuss some news, like I said, and we're going to open it up to the to chat after I discuss my news issues, and uh, we'll get started right away. So I just want to say hello to a few people in the chat, and as I like to say, we shall get this party started. I saw Sharon was in the chat earlier. I want to thank Sharon for being here and moderating. And uh, Beth is here. Good to see you, Beth. Hope I'm not interrupting your dinner. Uh, Lisa's here, and I'm sure Randy will be here shortly, and the chat will be filling in. Uh, like I said, guys, it's very difficult to book guests uh, this time of the year. You know, in August, people want to go away on vacation and, you know, holidays, whatever, before school starts. So um, I decided to just do a reselling news chat. And uh, like I said, I'm going to open it up after the, the news. Uh, I'll pop in the chat periodically. I'll open up after the news segment. Uh, if anybody wants to come in and just discuss, you know, reselling in general. I know a lot of the morning shows do that. Some of the other shows uh, used to do that. So I'm going to open it up to the, the chat in general to uh, discuss reselling. So let's get into it. I don't want to keep the, the people watching the replay waiting. Okay, guys, the uh, the first uh, item I'm going to talk about is kind of, it's reselling related, but it's related to everything, related to all of us. I should say quite a few of us, I should say. Um, and again, what I tell you guys I do is I monitor some of the reselling chats, uh, Facebook groups, uh, newsletters, et cetera. And uh, I try to bring anything I feel of interest to you people and share it with you. So the first one is actually, uh, like I said, going to relate to quite a few of us, um, not all of us, but quite a few of us. Uh, the bottom portion of this uh, information will relate to everyone. Uh, if you weren't aware of it, T-Mobile had a hack. Uh, and it's every reason you need to have two-factor authentication. Uh, T-Mobile has admitted that it has been hacked. So far, they have discovered that 54 million customers have had their personal information, including names, addresses, birth dates, and social security numbers accessed. Whenever breaches like this happen, it's common to wonder what more you can do to help protect your personal information. Well, you can start by creating a using a complex password stored in your password manager and then enable two-factor authentication for every account you have that supports the boosting the security of your account. Should also check to see if your account passwords are already on the dark web. Me personally, I've been hacked, so I, I know that, that that is a factor, and I, I check them periodically. And I do do the uh, authentication, two-factor authentication when I can do it because I have been hacked. So anyway, um, one of the things you want to do is, is again, is the two-factor authentication. Uh, sometimes it's written as 2FA. Um it's also commonly referred to as two-step verification or multi-factor verification. Uh, think of two-factor authentication as an extra layer of security to your online accounts. If you're not using 2FA in your account, your login process involves entering your username and password, and that's it. Two-factor authentication adds an extra step to that process. First, you'll enter your username and password, and then you'll be asked to enter a one-time passcode, sometimes also called an OTP, which is typically a six- to eight-digit number. You obtain that number, which changes every 30 to 60 seconds via an app or text message. Once you enter the code, only then are you granted access to your account. Uh, one thing that they brought up in this article is, is don't use SMS or text to receive your code. Use an app instead. Uh, when two-factor authentication first started to be rolled out to various websites and services, nearly all of them only supported sending you a one-time passcode via text message. And while it's a convenient and easy way to receive your codes, it's also widely insecure due to the SIM swap fraud. Okay, guys, I'm not a techie, but I'm going to get into this a little bit, the SIM swap fraud, just to make you guys aware of what's happening. Uh, and again, it can fact affect a lot of us. Uh, and then since um, T-Mobile purchased uh, other companies, and they're quite a bit larger now, I, I believe they're still the third largest um, uh, cell phone company, but they are getting larger and larger. So anyway... Uh, for those of you that are not familiar with SIM swap fraud, it occurs when someone calls your wireless carrier impersonating you and convinces the employee to change the SIM card linked to your phone number. With all coming texts and messages are now routed to the bad guy's phone, they can sign it to any of your online accounts of yours and be part of the sort of data breach or hack. Um, again, guys, be very careful with uh, with your phones uh, and again, with your authentication. Again, I was part of the the dark web, so to speak, uh, hack. 
Uh, I get notifications from Google periodically to change my passwords. Uh, it, it, it's very important. And again, affects us as resellers, but you know, affects all of us because 99% of us have, have some kind of smartphone device. Okay, guys. So I just want to pop in and say hello. Michelle is in. Thanks, Michelle, for helping out. I appreciate you being there. Uh, like I said, guys, what I want to do is going to go through a couple of these news articles. That was kind of like a general thing, but it does affect us as resellers because obviously we have smartphones. If you're in a reselling business, you have a smartphone. Um, and it, you know, it may affect, you know, your, your family members. So, you know, make sure you're aware of this hack that happened with T-Mobile. Uh, so, you know, T-Mobile did buy Sprint, so they're, they're a lot larger company now. So again, I, I believe they're still the third largest, uh, cell phone carrier, but they are a large company and, and it could affect quite a few of us. So if you're not aware of it, be careful, make sure, find out if they weren't your, uh, password identification information was hacked. Uh, again, they have social security, birth dates, et cetera, et cetera. So it's, it's, it's pretty evolved. So. Anyway, that was the uh, the first article I wanted to get into. Uh, the second one, again, is now this is strictly reseller related. Uh, eBay and Amazon raise seller fees for advertising. Uh, this came up a few weeks ago, guys. I just want to touch on it a little bit today, um, and this has to do with you know the um, the various companies do uh, updates for their, for their uh, investors, and this came up in their uh, their online meeting, so to speak, where they they released uh, data about their sales. Uh, Amazon has reported three consecutive quarters of over $7 billion in ad revenue. eBay is making money despite lower sales, partly because of ad revenue. For Amazon and eBay, advertising is becoming a lucrative source of revenue. Each hosts over 100 million ready buyers with payment information on file that marketers covet access to. However, many of the businesses that advertise on Amazon and eBay are also sellers on their sites. That means that spending on promoted products on these platforms is increasing the cost of operations, i.e. promoted listings. Uh, like Amazon sellers on eBay pay a percentage of the sales to the company. That percentage, or take rate they call it, has been steadily increasing on eBay over the last several quarters, raising from 9.2% in quarter two of 2020 to 11.3% in quarter two of 2021. It was the main reason eBay increased revenue in the most recent quarter while spending on a site decreased. Again, guys, their sales decreased, but their revenue increased because they're increasing our fees. So basically, they're charging for promoted listings, et cetera. So again, uh, again, you know, I've had people in the chat before, and uh, and again, I always tell you guys, list, list, list. Uh, my understanding is, you know, when I had Bobby on, and um, he's done very well with. You know, doing trending rates plus three and a half percent. Again, that seems to be working well for him again, but he has quite a few listings and he's constantly listing. So again, uh, you know, Beth's in the chat and I had I chatted up Beth on the previous video when I had Bobby on, you have to list. And if you can't list, you can always put uh, listings into your draft file and then add them as needed. So if you, for whatever reason you can't uh, put listings, do listings a particular day, you can have them in draft file and upload them that way. So again, that's the way you can kind of work around that. And you, you got to feed the uh, Cassini, the, uh, the eBay algorithm to make sure that your listings get up towards the top of the uh, the search uh, ranking. So again, uh, eBay lost lost uh, sales on the site last year, but they made more money due to ad revenue. So it is what it is. Uh, again, this is again, eBay related eBay CEO Jamie Anacone, I, I own, I, I think it's pronounced, I said I don't know why I said that, I own, is, is, rejects his predecessor's approach to buyers. Uh, the eBay CEO explained the decline in buyers in the second quarter to the company's new approach to buyers. He wants to turn them into lifelong enthusiasts. He said changes in the marketing mix and product investments have been focused on attracting and retaining these enthusiasts, particularly Gen Z and millennials eBay saw a reduction of buyers of low-priced items and explained high-value buyers represent 20% of eBay buyers and account for 75% of GMV, basically sales. So again, high-value buyers represent 20% of eBay's buyers, but they account for 75% of eBay's sales. Low-value buyers represent 50% of eBay buyers, but they only account for about 5% of GMV. The CEO is rejecting the approach his predecessor took in 2019, which was really just about the number of active buyers, even low-value buyers or one-and-done buyers. He has the whole organization pivot to focus on these high-value buyers, buyers that are buying over $800, buying six times a year, or buyers who sell, he said. 
What do you think about this, guys? Uh, eBay's new approach in terms of focusing on higher priced goods, consumer to consumer selling, and higher value buyers. Uh, and have you benefited by the new CEO's uh, directions? Um, again, it seems like eBay is constantly changing their their uh, high ranking officials. Uh, you know, CEOs are gone, uh, marketing directors are gone, uh, directors of, of seller relations are gone. So. Um, it's difficult. They're constantly changing their, their upper management. So, and apparently the new CEO is his whole philosophy is let's go off the bigger fish, so to speak. Um, I don't know how it's affecting our sales. Uh, again, he's saying that, uh, you know, the smaller buyers only account for like 5%. So again, you know, volume is volume, but again, they are making more money through advertising. So, it is what it is, guys. Uh, you know, eBay's charging us more for advertising, promoted listings, i.e., uh, and their sales are, even though they're down, they are making more money due to the advertising. Joni, thanks for joining. I appreciate you being here. So let me get into the next article, and we'll discuss that. And, guys, uh, I mentioned earlier for some of you that are they're just recently coming to the chat, uh, I do not have a guest today. Uh, and, again, I'm always looking for new guests. So if any of you are interested in joining me, uh, you can reach out to me on any of my social media sites. Uh, I'm Adam's Exploits everywhere. Um, you don't have to be a high volume seller if you're a reseller and you're, and you're passionate about reselling, uh, and you have a you know a webcam or a cell phone, uh, and I can walk you through how to use Streamyard. You're more than welcome to join me. I, again, I'm always looking for guests, especially this time of year when things are people are on vacation and whatnot, so it's, it's a little bit lower. Uh, I bought this other thing uh, article up on um, another chat. And um, I'm, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna really get into the the, the reason, <laughs> but th there was an issue in the chat. I brought this up. To, uh, Anthony that was on the show uh, in the past, Pittsburgh. Most of you know Anthony, a great guy, uh, a very talented reseller, really, really into to trading cars, sports cars, etc. Uh, and I brought this up to Anthony in the chat. So this has happened about a week ago. So uh, some of you may have not heard this, but I just wanted to bring this up to your attention and get your feelings on this. Uh, Scandal Rocks eBay trading card category. eBay accuses partner PWCC of shill bidding. Collectors on discussing this matter on social media said they received a message from eBay that read in part, recently it was determined that individuals associated with trading card seller PWCC have engaged in shill bidding, which is prohibited on eBay. As a result, eBay has restricted PWCC selling privileges and lists list things effective today for those of you that don't know shield building is the deliberate placing of bids on a seller's behalf to artificially drive up the price of auction items shield bidding is known to occur in auctions of high value items like art and antiques where bidders valuations differ and the sellers pay off from fraud is high again so apparently they're alleging that this pwcc had employees or other people uh you know bidding up on their their items to push up the price of their sale items uh, so they can make more in commissions, you know, more in sales. So again, that is legal, and that's that's a federal offense. And uh, what they also said, what may be more shocking to some of them, is that the news that eBay's accusation is report that PWCC reportedly pays a fraction of what other sellers paying commission fees. So again, PWCC gets a discounted rate for selling their their uh, collectible cards on their site, but they're they're using shill betting to to bump up their sales price. He said that the portion uh, is said to be between 1% and 3% versus the 10% that other sellers pay. Again, PWCC is allegedly paying between 1% and 3% commission to eBay, where other sellers are paying 10%. PWCC has denied the allegation and is in the process of starting their own online selling platform. So, guys, I'm just curious. Uh, I'm sure some of you are aware of, uh, you know, Shield Benning and what's involved in that. Uh, Beth can come on, sure. I'm going to post it momentarily. Um, uh, Sharon, I was just going to get into that. I appreciate you coming in, Beth. Uh, I was, I was going to make you guys aware of something, trying a little different, trying to play with the, the YouTube tools. Uh, there's a, um, a, uh, a poll at the top of the chat, uh, about your favorite, um, platforms. Just, just doing something different, guys. Trying to make a little entertaining because I didn't have a guest, so uh, you know, has up there. You know, what's your favorite platform? Is it eBay, Amazon, Porsche, Mark, Macquarie? So towards the end of the show, I'll close it down and just uh, 
you know, polls or, or what they are, you know, it's just not a lot of people participate. It's not going to mean a lot, but I figured I would try something different and just, uh, just spice the show up a little bit. So I will put that uh, link in the chat. I have one or two more articles to, um, to talk about, not a lot more. And then uh, let me post that link in the chat. And I appreciate you joining me. Let me just do that. Put that link in into the chat okay appreciate you joining me beth and like i said i like one or two other things to discuss and you can you can pop in okay bear with me here i gotta do a little copy and paste here okay there's the link beth Johnny J, stupid, stupid games, stupid prizes. That's why I prefer new cards. They're also accused of trimming and uh, regrading cards. I had heard that. I'm not. I'm not a collector of cards, and I'm not an expert, Johnny. But I had heard that. I didn't really want to get into that because I'm not really into the technicalities. Uh, I have heard. It's funny because I heard, learned about shill bidding when I first got involved in uh, reselling several years ago, and um, you know, I had I'd heard about it. I didn't know it was called um, shill bidding. But it was something that I was uh, was aware of when I saw this. It's like wow, and then they're getting a discounted rate, and they're uh, you know they're, they're they're bumping up the valuation of their things you know fraudulently. So anyway, Beth, I'll bring you on in one minute. I just want to discuss this one other. I think I have one other article I want to discuss, and then I'll bring Miss Beth Resar Robo on. Okay, let's see here. Okay, actually, you know what? Uh, let me bring Beth on. I have two things I want to discuss, and they're not actually articles. Uh, they're uh, things that I found in some of the chats and some of the uh, reselling um, videos. So let me bring Beth on, and we'll do that. Hello, hello. Hi, how are you, Adam? I'll be better once I turn up my volume on my computer. I can hear you better. <laughs> I don't even have any makeup on or anything, but I wanted to come in because I haven't seen you in so long. How are you doing? I'm doing okay. Like I said, it's crazy this time of year trying to get guests on, and uh, I don't uh, want I don't want to bother people that are on a regular basis. So uh, you look great, by the way. You know, sans makeup. <laughs> Am I looking tan? I I, I want to uh, a little bit tan. I guess I, yes, I guess this is a little it personal, but be. I want to congratulate you. I, I, you're doing excellent on your weight <laughs> loss. I saw your Facebook post. Oh, thank you. Congratulations. Um, thank you. So, yeah, normally we're eating at this time, but my wife's not here, so I've already eaten. So just had okay. leftovers. So Appreciate that. Uh, okay. I was going to bring a couple things that, like I said, I tell you guys, I monitor some of the other YouTube videos, chats, and some of the other things. And two of these actually came up on, on videos, YouTube videos, reseller-related videos. Uh, guys, I have some of the, the the OG people that I follow on a regular basis and my, you know, link to my YouTube page. I have, you know, Casey the Rockstar Flipper. Uh, I have, uh, you know, Wade's Ventures. I have Rake and Profit. Uh, so I have them all below. But anyway, one of the the channels that I do follow and I want to have him on eventually um, is uh, the College Picker, Eric. Uh, he's part of that, that bona fide hustler and Rake and Profit Um but did you, did you go to that one year, I, I believe, or did, did you? Did, no, I've only been you? to Vegas. That's the only one I've been to. Okay, yeah, they they have they have their little the what well, they used to, you know, pre pandemic. They used to have a little uh, uh, the, the green room, I think is what they call it, right? They used mm -hmm. to have it in uh, was it Austin area, I believe. They used to have their their convention. I think so, yeah. And that was okay. before my time, really. Like okay. I was just okay. I was just starting when they you started were just starting back that. then. Okay. I didn't even know any of those people. Okay. So, well, I used to follow. I wish uh, they'd do another one now. I know all these people like Tanya and Deb. And I did have lunch with Deb pinching pesos last month. Oh, um, how's Deb doing? But, Deb, Deb, I know Deb was doing very poorly. Mm -hmm. She was very ill for a while there. Yeah. Has, has she okay. recovered fully? Yeah, she's okay. Yeah, because yeah, I, I used, I used uh, to love, she used to do the, uh, I forget what they used to call it, but she used to be going with Yvonne and the, the reseller stew. Reseller stew. See that? Mm -hmm. That's why I have you on Beth to remember these important yeah. things that I forget. <laughs> yeah. If you haven't seen reseller stew, go back and watch them because there's great info there. Oh, absolutely. Some great Even information. Even it's four years old, but Deb is amazing at plushes and appliance parts. That's how I got into appliance parts and. I mean, she's right, just amazing. I remember you saying one of your videos, you uh, reached, no wonder I can't hear you. My, my earbuds out of my ear. That would help, Adam. <laughs> uh, you had said that you had uh, texted her a message or something on Instagram, and she she was very cooperative, very helpful to you. I actually, yeah. And actually, when she was uh, intubated, 
And um, during COVID, she was intubated and out for two weeks. I was texting her. Oh, okay. And I said, I know you can't read this, Deb. You're sleeping. But when you wake up, if you ever want to meet me, I want to meet you. And oh, that's so kind of you. She yeah, got to I'm my so message. Sure and so, <laughs> so it was neat. So she's really that. nice. She's exactly in person what she is on screen. So Okay, yeah. So, anyway, and again, I, 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 had to have a couple, I had a couple of tips I wanted to throw out if you want oh, to. Do. Um, as some of you who watch me know, my stores have been growing by 30 percent in the last three months. It's just amazing. And I've been doing what what Adam was saying. I list 11 items every day, no matter what. And whatever I list extra goes in my draft bank. Right now, I have 66 drafts. So I could literally take six days off wow. and eBay wouldn't know it. I could just let those go live. But one thing that happened a couple of weeks ago is I parted out 20 machines. And instead of going sourcing for clothing, which is what I'm really trying to sell, I parted out 20 machines and I listed probably 150, 200 pieces. And my next week, my sales plummeted. So I think obviously eBay does not want me to change categories like that so fast. So now what I'm doing is I'm parting out two machines at a time and I'm kind of intermingling them with the clothing so that it's not shocking my algorithm. And that was a big error on my part. But I just thought, well, as long as I do my, at that time it was 10 listings a day. I thought as long as I'm listing 10 items a day, my sales are going to just keep going. And you're wrong. They obviously want the same categories going. So... Yeah, so, guys, like, I have some jewelry that I need to list, and I'm holding off because I need to wait until I can intermix those jewelry pieces in with my clothing. So, so. you're saying I, I, I mean, I have several things. I mean, I obviously I have clothes a list, and I have some, a lot of hard goods list. You're saying so if you do like hard goods and you mix in clothing and stuff, you think you think mm -hmm. uh, eBay penalizes the algorithm? Penalizes yeah, um, because really? I basically switched to clothing. Um, I mean, full force clothing every yeah, day. I was surprised 11 when pieces, I saw that. I was like, know? okay, well, somebody likes to sell clothing. And um, <laughs> and then all these parts, all these appliances were just like building up and building up, you know. So I thought, I'm just going to take this one week and I'm just going to get them all and knock them out, you know. That was not the right thing to do. So, um, so I'm trying to just narrow down to two things, clothing and parts. But... I have this jewelry that is family collection. I still, my wife has just been driving me crazy, but you've got to list this jewelry. So that's the only reason I want to list it because I'm afraid it's going to throw out my algorithm. So, because <laughs> every day eBay's expecting jeans and tunics and skirts and dresses and, you know, so anyway, that's been my experience in the last month. Beth did have two did stores, have Randy. Stores, right? I want you to comment. Are there any questions? Yeah, I did have, have two stores. Store? And some people are still with this two-store philosophy. But the reason I started the second store was because I had a gift shop and I had souvenirs. And so I started a souvenir gift shop kind of thing. And then I changed it to a total appliance parts because I thought, you know, they would see food processors mixed in with blue jeans. And I just didn't like the way it was. And then when eBay told us we could get 10,000, um, you know, items for the same free price. Free insertions, free. <laughs> I was like paying $59 for two stores and I didn't even have 10,000 items in any store. So I made the decision to close the second store for that reason only, because now I don't have to pay for that second store. I still think it looks really funky. Like I'm a perfectionist and I have OCD. When I look at my store and I see that, it bothers me. But we have to be honest, most buyers don't actually come to our store, you know, page. So anyway, but like when I set up coupons and when I set up sales, you have to put a photo, you know, for the for the sale. And I never know whether to put an appliance or a piece of clothing. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch it to my little 10 of hearts card and just put the 10 of hearts card with my coupon. Cause it's just, to me, it looks weird when you, you get a coupon and you're trying to buy a pair of jeans and there's a food processor lid in the photo, you know, I like that idea. I think it's a good idea. And when you are shopping for a food processor and a coupon comes up and there's a pair of jeans, it just, to me, doesn't, you know, makes sense oh Sharon but agrees. coupons i'm having a great experience with coupons i my my sales have totally 
taken off again with coupons. So probably well, I, about I, one third I, of my I, items right now are selling with coupons. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm trying to remember. Uh, you do promoted, but you don't do high promoted, right? Um, right now I'm doing 10%, which is kind of high. But um, on my parts, I'm only doing 5% because they really are typically around 3.8 to 7. So I lowered them to 5 because uh, a couple weeks ago, I switched to free shipping for returns on my parts. I'm doing an experiment on that Ooh. because the majority of parts sellers are doing free shipping. And I feel like I was missing out on sales. And I went ahead and started doing free returns too. But not if they're like 3 or 4 pounds. I'm not doing free returns. But so far, no parts have come back in the last three weeks, and I've made a lot of sales on parts. So I'm I'm just gonna keep it like this for a couple of months and see how it goes. Um, All right, so you're right. doing promoted listings, and you're, you're running a coupon. Um, and the sales. How, you, how are you doing it? <laughs> Yeah, I'm doing a sale. I do everything pretty much because I want to hit them all in a, from all different directions. They can use a coupon. They can make me an offer. Well, on my parts, when I did the free shipping, free returns, there's no best offer. This is the price. It's on sale or you can use a coupon and that's it. There's no bargaining. Um, I set up the price because my coupon is 20% off. So I like if somebody uses a coupon, how much would I take for this? And that's what the price is set at. So, so I've made, I've, since I've started this, I've sold probably 12, 15 pieces of, you know, parts. So it is working, but, um, who knows? I could have sold them before. So, so I was going to ask you, I mean, how does that relate to what you were selling previously? Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I'd have to go back and really figure that out. But the nice thing about it is, is that I'm, I'm doing auto accept on a lot of my offers because I don't know if how many of you followers know I have a full-time job and I just don't really have time to sit there and try to figure out if I want to take an offer or not, how long I've had it, if it's flawed. I don't have time for that when I'm working my other job. So I have set an accept an auto accept um, price for what I would take the lowest. And so I've gotten a lot of sales that just says best offer. And then it goes cha-ching sold. And, you know, nine times out of 10, they've offered me more than my lowest except so, but that has really helped me a lot. If any of y'all have jobs and you're having to, you feel like you're having to always look at your phone for offers that I, now I would never do auto decline because you if you, you if you, if you put fourteen ninety nine and someone offers you fourteen ninety eight, you've lost the sale. So I would never do auto decline, but auto accept. I know based on how much I paid for it, how long I've had it, what I'll take. You know. Sarah so. said she did her coupon on Canva. Uh, with yeah. On it. Okay. I bet it's. I, nice. I like that idea. You know, a logo or a picture or something. Absolutely. Yeah, I I think I'm just gonna do my little ten of hearts card and. It'll satisfy my you know, perfectionism yeah. because I just don't like it when you, I, I'm trying to just stay with those two niches. Um, I mean, I have a lot of junk thrown in. I have a lot of junk on my store that I need to get rid of, but I've got the space. So I'm just keeping it because some of the junk eventually sells. So I'm just keeping it right now. And um you know, every once in a while, like I sold a Dutch cookbook the other night. It's, it's just a little tiny pamphlet. I got it for 10 cents and I sold it for like, I think it was Sharon, you were there, weren't you? 27, 28 bucks. Okay. And I've sold it three times. So if you ever see the Dutch cookbook, it's just a little thin. It's got a little Dutch girl on it. It's bright red, vintage, man, those things sell. And I've had that thing for years. I, I got three of them and that was the last one. And if I would have gotten rid of it, I wouldn't have, you know, made that money. Once again, I have no idea what a Dutch cookbook is. Once you like, yeah, it's just an old cookbook, but it's real. It's got maybe twenty pages in it, you know, and it's just got Dutch recipes. So, oh, so it has right. like like a Polish or Italian or German cookbook. It's just yeah. Dutch recipes. Gotcha. Yeah. So and that, obviously, when you pay ten cents, you sold for twenty-seven dollars. Yeah, and oh. and it's yeah, I showed it on my live stream Sunday night, so. um it's very small and it sold really well. <laughs> I don't remember what I got. Well, I was going to pop it. You're you a little bit late for me. You're we did like 9, 30, 10 o'clock. I was, <laughs> I wasn't feeling it. 8, 15 so right now. I tried to compromise with you, but ah, eight, there you go. 8, 8 o'clock <laughs> is a little early for me. But um, 
I know, I know it's bad timing for you, so I'm sorry. You can always watch a replay. Oh no, I, I, I yeah, I should watch the replay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. Well, I, you know, it's funny. I again, I guys, I discussed a little bit personal stuff, but I don't watch very little TV anymore. I, mean, I don't have, and most of the good games on my, at least my local teams are on, you know, paid cable TV, so I can't even watch those. Mm-hmm. You know, so I, I watch yeah. YouTube, and I watch a lot, a lot of reselling channels, a lot of you know, YouTube related creator channels so yeah i, I don't watch very many uh youtubers anymore um everybody sharon knows this about me i watch law and order okay it, to <laughs> me it's just this, it's, it's the it's the cadence of it that okay. i like okay. and i and i've seen so many of them that i pretty much know how it's going to end i don't really have to look at it but I just like the cadence of it. Once I found a show that, you know, and it's on all the time. I can find it any time of the day or night, pretty much. And that's pretty much what I put on either that or Star Wars. Because um, unless I'm in a working hangout, and I do working hangouts. Star Wars the people. movie or Star Trek, the TV show? Yeah, Star Wars the movies, all okay. the different okay. movies. And, you know, I, of course, I have them memorized, right? Because, you know, that's me, right? <laughs> yeah. And um, so it's just the cadence and the, you know of that um that's what i do i don't really watch too many youtubes because it makes me stop too much because they give information that i might be interested in and then i gotta stop what i'm doing and listen and i don't really want to listen you know what i'm saying so um and i don't like working to music it puts me to sleep so i play high tempo music in fact i i, I yeah. what a bunch of uh you know echoes when amazon does their prime sales they they had these great deals and i like last year i bought these echoes it's like where did i put all these echoes i mean because i got clutter everywhere from reselling you know it's like what the heck did i put these echoes i have no idea where i put them but i want to i want to put one in my my ebay room because i would play like you know what the heck? i forgot who i was playing you know real high energy like you know not this kid music, but like current music. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, so it's, it helped. <laughs> it gets me moving a little bit. A uh, couple things I want to bring up. Now, you do you use um? What do you use for your shipping for your postage? Do you use you ship through um the websites or do you use a um flat rate envelope seven eighteen? Okay, well, when you, when you purchase your, I, I want the reason I bring this because I have this in one of the things I want to discuss. Do you purchase it through the various uh e, e- retailers or do you purchase it through pirate ship or shippo or how do you normally purchase? Yeah, I use eBay shipping. Okay. Did you have a problem purchasing uh, printing labels this week? No. No. But you know what I realized that I've been doing for four years and never noticed that I never go down to the box that says ship today, ship tomorrow, ship. To-. I always just leave it. And so it's Sunday night and it's saying I'm shipping on Sunday night. And I've been doing that for four years. I've never put for tomorrow. I always do my it. shipping the night before. <laughs> okay. It obviously hasn't hurt my shipping metrics. Yeah, you can't ship but, on Sunday, so yeah. And I was, I don't know how I noticed it this week. And I'm like, well, I'm not shipping tonight. It's, you know, Monday night. And it's, and I click that little drop down. It says Tuesday. And I'm like, has that always been there? I've never noticed it. And I guess well, it apparently has. I, I use pirate ship. I tell you guys, and, and again, do as I say and as I do sometimes. Again, I don't want to get into it with my health, but anyway, I'm not I'm not listening enough. So if you don't list enough, like that's why I keep bringing it up. List, 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 list. And like Beth said, list, list, list. And if you can't list, have in your draft file. Yeah, but don't list it all at one time. You need to spread it out. Same yes. amount every day. So anyway, the reason I put that well, I, I do my shipping through pirate ship because I'm not doing a huge amount of volume, so I'm not top rated plus, so I don't get the disc, the big discount right. from eBay. So I use Pirate Ship, because when I use Pirate Ship, I get commercial rates plus from, from item one. Right. I, I realize some people get better rates if they use top rated plus, but you know you have to offer, you have to be top rated and you have to offer free returns, which I'm not, I'm not going to offer free returns. It's just my philosophy. I use um, Pirate Ship if it's something really big and weird, but nine times out of ten, it's no cheaper. It just has to do with the box and the weight. And not, most of the time, I'm just as cheap going on eBay, but I do check Pirate Ship. And then, like, if I'm sending something to family or somebody buys something on one of my Buy It Now live streams, I ship through Pirate Ship. Um, but other than that, I just use, you know, eBay. So, and I don't do bulk shipping because I don't want to make any mistakes. 
there's no reason for me to print 10 labels at a time. I can do them one at a time super fast. So I don't want to make a mistake. <laughs> I'm going to get into that, Lisa. I, 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 wanted, I, wanted, I was going to address that. I wasn't aware. I, I thought that they were not going to have that price increase. I know they're going to have an increase during the holidays. You know, they pulse it. They say, oh, well, our demand is, is increased and we're going to raise the rates during the holidays. I thought that the uh, the, the federal government said they were, they told them they couldn't do that. I know they wanted to raise the rates. So so Lisa is saying that they are raising the rates. Um, I'll have to research that. I'm, going, I'm definitely going to research that because I thought that they kind of kind of nixed that. I know, uh, uh, was it the William DeJoy or whatever the, the postmaster general wanted to do that? And then whoever, again, I don't know all the intricacies, but basically whatever the, the the Congress that is involved with the post office, they said, no, you can't do that. We don't want you to do that. So maybe they are still doing it. Well, right now my shipping prices are good for if there is a rate increase. I think like like these are 718 to ship and I charge 799 flat rate. Okay. But if something has to go in a pad of flat rate, I think that's 786. So depending on how much they raise it, um, I probably, if they go over eight bucks, I probably won't change it. I'll probably just do seven ninety nine and eat it on this one. Um, but what, what, but I, what I, and I always bring up too, and, and, and then I know my, everyone in the chat right now is, is a very experienced resellers, but I do have, hopefully I have more and more resellers that aren't experienced and trying to learn. Mm -hmm. Uh, what I always bring up is you are paying commission, you know, you're, you're paying final value fee on your shipping as well. So even mm -hmm. if you offer free shipping, you know, eBay or wherever is charging you final value fees on that shipment. So if you're paying, I just use $10 to make it easy for my math. If you're paying mm -hmm. $10 and eBay's charging you 10%, you're really paying $11 for that shipping. Okay. Randy's saying a 30 cent raise. So I'm okay on the flat rate, but on I am going to lose a little bit on the padded flat rate. So Randy, I, so, make, so you, I do make money on my shipping. So I'm not going to, I'm probably not going to change it. I, what I'm concerned about is first class. I charge five ninety nine, and I have a feeling that that's going to I'm going to get a little bit messed up there. But we'll just have to see. Well, I heard it was they wanted to affect first rate, first class. It wasn't going to affect like priority. But then again, like I said, what I told you earlier, I thought that they had kind of nixed that. So maybe they're still pushing it through. Yeah, I don't know. Right. Really I, I don't know. I'd like to keep my prices the and, same for a while, but the reason I brought that up was, uh, and I was going to recommend. I was going to, I'm going to put, I'm going to put the link to his this video, guys, in my uh, in the chat, so I can help you guys out with this. Uh, again, I want to have uh, it's the college picker Eric. He does a lot with thermal printers, um, and I wanted to bring that up. That he um, he said that on eBay had changed the way you print labels through eBay. And again, like I said, I use pirate ship, so I don't, I don't print through eBay. Uh, you know, I have my, my eBay connected to pirate ship. So I, I give them access. I print it that I'm way. I'm not sure what he's talking about. He's talking about the four by six labels that they changed the setup and it was know. difficult to, to, yeah, print I don't do a four by six. EBay. So that's why. Okay. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to, for you guys, I'm just going to put the link in the chat. So if you did have problems, I'm assuming most of you probably now have figured that out. Um, mm -hmm. But I want to put it in the chat if anybody has issues with this. So you guys can watch Eric's video. And I, I definitely want to try to have Eric come on the uh, the show because he's, he's Mr. Uh, thermal printer and he's, he's very, well, he's very knowledgeable reseller to begin with, but he knows almost everything about thermal printers. So I figured if anyone has thermal printer questions or, you know, questions, problems with the thermal printers, uh, Eric, Eric is excellent with that. So I wonder, oh, that was one of the things I was going yeah, to The only about. thing I had a problem with that I, this was months ago, but when I went on managed payments and my payout was that day and I went to ship things and it wouldn't let me ship because it said I didn't have enough money. Oh, wasn't and connected down, to your bank down at the bottom, you have to change it to take it out of your credit card, which actually goes, I think through PayPal or something. And then you ship for a couple of days and you get money, but you have to, sh you have to change it back. If you forget to change it back, it's still coming out of your payment method, whatever you've chosen as your second, your payment method. And I forgot to change it back <laughs> and I'm looking at my checking account and I'm like, what are these charges, you know? And then I realized, Oh, I should be getting this out of my pending money or, you know, or my available funds or whatever. I guess it comes out of pending. Yeah. So they weren't so taking it from your pen and they, they were doing it directly. People who get money, people who get daily payouts, that probably happens to them all the time because they, they start the day with zero, you know, and when they go to ship that night, 
they may still have zero if they Especially haven't the made the sales. If, like you said, they're shipping Sunday night. You know, that's they've all the whole weekends mm -hmm. with the shipping. I guess just depends, you know. But I don't know. That was that was another learning thing for me on the shipping. But other than that, I haven't. Late. I have problems with Poshmark. That's the one that I have problems with. But I'm I'm planning on getting off, off of Poshmark eventually. So again, we'll, again, Susan, we'll address your your your, uh, your question. But I, I, I tell you, people, I made these days. <laughs> I want to address the best question. What why what, what problem are you having with Poshmark? Um, about six months ago, um, they did a Windows update, and my Dymo would no longer print, and it affected all the Dymos in the world. So you had to go to Dymo and download an older version in order to get it to work while they were working on it. And um, and then and then later I went back and did their new update or whatever. And ever since then, I have to actually pull up the Poshmark label, snip it, like copy it. And then copy it into my Dymo, and then stretch it out, and then print it. And that's, that's the only a way I've been for able Eric, to print. The college picker, code. he would know how to do that. Yeah, and <laughs> a lot of time. I have looked on every video I've watched, and most of them are outdated. And so when they tell you, "Oh, just hit this and hit that," those only exist on my screen. They're not there anymore because this is a totally updated Dymo version. Um, to go along with this Windows. I mean, I woke up that morning and my Dymo was just like dead. And I noticed that my computer had updated overnight. I leave my computer on at night. And um, and I thought, I wonder if that's what it, and it was. So it's not a, I mean, I don't sell a lot on Poshmark, but people who watch my shipping videos on Sunday know, I always like to try to start with my Poshmark sales and just get that part over with because I hate it. <laughs> so, but. Just want to say hello to Patrick Murphy for joining, and uh, let's address. There's some questions in the chat, guys. I appreciate you asking questions, and uh, we have a, we have a Miss Beth on here, and she's a uh, very grace, grace, well, graceful. I guess it would be. I'm getting my my mind scrambled today. <laughs> gracious, that's the word. Gracious. I'm ready to go back to, to Vegas, Adam. My sister-in-law's in Vegas right now, and I'm very jealous. Uh oh. oh by the way, guys, I'm, I'm this. This is like a total aside. Uh, and if I, I know Beth, you do YouTube, you use StreamYard, you probably won't do this, but I, anyone that does YouTube and Patrick, it may affect you. Uh, StreamYard is having like a, like a, a virtual conference tomorrow. Oh. For what it's worth. So I have to work in, in the office tomorrow. You'll be in the office. It. Yeah. I figured out maybe I'll pick up some. I'm always looking for YouTube pointers, so I figured I would. I think it's like just three or four hours. So I, I registered and uh, uh, they're going to have Gary V as their keynote speaker. Oh, wow. So Are anyway, you going to be able to give like. Suggestions. Pardon me. Are you going to be able to give like suggestions or ask questions know. or anything? I just I figured that, and 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 what the funny part is, they're very helpful to me. And I watch the show. It's every other Saturday. They have three Saturday shows uh, that, that start noon Eastern, uh, mm -hmm. and two of them are, are by the marketing director uh, mm -hmm. and someone else that's involved in the. Basically, she has her own business, but she's one of his, you know, she helps co-produce it, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, Christian and uh, uh, Leticia. But I can anyway. answer Susan's question. Um, I don't do calculated shipping on very much because I find that it calculates for the customer much more than what I can ship it for. So it's beneficial. You know, like if, you more I, to if ship I, it than what they're... Like I can get a men's pair of, you know, humongous jeans in this for seven eighty six, but if I do calculated on it, it's gonna cost the customer like nine dollars and something. And they don't want to pay nine dollars to ship a pair of men's jeans. Oh, so it's that's the fair. only thing I do calculated on is like something that's two to three pounds and up, like you know, my parts and stuff like that. And people are used to that with my parts, but clothing, um, no. Randy says, does anyone find eBay being uh, a lot slower? I've heard that. I've heard that it's, it's, it's been quite slow. Uh, you know, Sh Sharon's my computer expert. And, 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 you know, everything I hear. I know about it's eBay not is slow for group. Sharon right now because Sharon and I have been talking and she's crushing it on eBay this week. Okay. So uh, good. I think I'm up. I'm up, but I'm not. I'm not up a whole lot, but I'm, I'm locked down. I haven't been. I have, summer slowdown never hit me this year. I was so glad. So, are we gonna get it with the summer slowdown? Okay, no, but that's because of the constant 
every day I do the same exact thing. It's like a machine. I just feed it every day. Same thing. You know, I do my coupons. I do my sales. I do my promo listings. I do my drafts. And then I fix 11 items. And it's then repeat tomorrow. <laughs> so. Well, there, there's one of your answers that Randy Michelle said she had a problem uh, updating a listing. She had to try seven or eight times and it wouldn't change. Oh, wow. Now, I am having trouble if anybody sells um, men's big clothes. It won't take big and tall in the um, size, the size type, you know, where you put really? regular plus, big and tall, petite. It will not take big and tall. So if I get a 4XL t-shirt for a man, it won't take it. I have to put regular. I can, so you're saying I can item hit, specifics. Yeah, yeah. Can I hit type it in where draft. they have enter your own can you type it in there it once you hit big and tall and then try to put the tie it like it like puts it yellow and you can't type anything so then i hit save as draft and then i open the draft again and for a while when i'd open it up it's a big and tall in there and then i'd fill in my 4xlt now it won't even do that now it won't when i come back it won't do it and i don't know so i'm just putting regular Cause there's nothing else I can do. And then I put four XLT. I mean, cause I got a list of right? XLT so, in the description and okay. And, and also I put in, regular for size title? type for size type in the, in the item specifics, I put regular you, and then the size. Well, you put and, it and in your somebody, title and you put it in your description. As in well, my right? title, it's big and tall, but again, I'm just, Again, guys, I use these stupid sayings that I, I learned 100 years ago. But, you know, they say when you assume, you do put 4XL in your title. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And you put it in your description. Mm -hmm. But you can't, when you cl click off big and tall, you can't click off that box that says. It, can't, it won't put big and tall. You know, on the left-hand yes. side, they can, uh, the customer can look and say, size type, regular, petite, big and tall, you know, blah, blah, blah. And if they hit big and tall they're not going to find my shirt because my shirt's in regulars, even though it's a 4XLT. Because once they hit that left-hand button that says big and tall, all the ones that are in the regular are going to go away. So they're not going to find Here. mine if they hit that. Well, so that's a, a reason, bummer. There's a reason I collect Glitch Bay. <laughs> but I also heard that a lot of men don't even go over to the left-hand side and hit big and tall. They just type in, I want a 4XLT polo shirt and whatever comes up that's what they start looking at most of them aren't going to go over and click oh regular big and you know because they're all they're seeing the big and talls but some of them do <laughs> and well, i'm losing the, those sales that makes that me is, mad <laughs> that is true and, and when when you're a larger size it's a pain because i mean i'll see these deals and and again i, I you know I'm, I'm a thrifter i'm i'm a frugal or you know whatever you want to call it you know and i i shop for deals so when i'm looking for clothes and again i'm a big guy you know the three x or you know, we're trying to get the two x but i'm mainly three x's now um and you, you'll type in something oh it's a great deal you'll type in well in this cover they don't have three x and this cover they don't have three x so if you do put in if you can search by size it makes things easier so mm -hmm. yeah and if you want a red shirt and somebody's typed in their item specific uh burgundy or you know cherry red or something they don't you won't see their item no no you know so you have to be really careful about the item specifics absolutely so yeah. you know anyway uh, let me see what susan says here it's she might read my glass my allergies are acting up here uh we're slow on ebay glitches can lost pictures lost pictures 189 listings and poof oh my word uh thank god list perfectly had them release them okay so says you are using uh list perfectly uh and you're happy with them uh again guys as an aside this uh, it's not my channel but you know i moderate for casey the rockstar flipper uh i believe it's 6 p.m tomorrow casey normally does 9 p.m eastern it's going to be 6 p.m eastern tomorrow he's having the the founders of list perfectly on uh, and he's doing his show three hours earlier. Uh, there's some giveaways and whatnot. So um, I, I texted. She's Kate saying that it's still not fixing it, though. The list perfectly is not fixing it. Huh. Just thank God, list perfectly uh, have list perfectly released three loops from now and still not fixed. So what is what is not fixing? Is eBay not fixing the glitches or? 
I know, I know if you have a, with the, again, I don't use list perfectly, so I don't want to speak out of school, but I know they have like a pro account or something and you can, you can save listings or drafts or, or, or pictures or whatever. Yeah. Again, it's I like that it, old, but, um, what was that other one? Uh, again, I don't want to speak out of school. I know I, when you have the higher, the higher Ink frog, ones. Ink frog used to hold your pictures for you. Right. Right. Same I think one. that's what Susan's saying. Is that Same. The I kept picture. thinking it was something turtle, but it's ink frog. Hey, Jennifer. Hi, Jennifer. Yeah. So. Yeah. Did you use ink frog for a while? No, but I I know that it used to hold people's pictures, and when we had that big picture fiasco, the only people that had their pictures were ink frog users. <laughs> Mine did. I didn't lose any. Oh, thank God. I got the clear. I, so I, I mean, I have. I, have I had saved a lot of pictures, but to go through there and find them. Ugh. No. Another thing I've been doing is um, if I have an item that hasn't sold, I do a search on it. And you know how when you start searching it, things start coming up below in blue? Yes. Like if you say Mickey Mouse clock and you look and you can see what's the first category that it comes up in. That's where you want to list. That's the category you want to list your Mickey Mouse clock in. Okay, repeat that again. So, because like, like it so like if bit. I have a Mickey Mouse clock, I'll just do a eBay search Mickey Mouse clock, and there'll be a drop down right there before you hit enter, and whatever that first one is, it may be Mickey Mouse clock collectibles, Mickey Mouse clock Disney, Mickey Mouse clock children, whichever one is at the top. That's the one you want to list your Mickey Mouse clock in because most people are going to hit the very first one to search in. And so again, again, I'm guys, going back through my hard goods right now and I'm re I'm re-entering them into the search to find out there are things I got that people said, oh, you should have sold this years ago, you know. And um I'm going and finding out where what's the very first one that comes up. And that's and I'm changing it to that category. So or or you can look at another thing you can do is look at both categories and see, well, how many have sold in this category and how many sold in that category? But um, nine times out of 10, it's that first one, because I think people just hit that first one, you know. Well, I, I talk to Randy sometimes offline about you know, about reselling. And um, he says what he does a lot of times is he, he does, this, like you said, a search. And he sees mm -hmm. whatever one comes up first, and then mm -hmm. basically he he uses that, you know, and, and you know sell similar, and basically uses similar mm -hmm. text and similar, you know, uh, yeah. titles because that yeah, came up I, on the eBay algorithm as number one. And he says, it seems "Yeah, to I'm work selling well for him. similar. I'm selling similar off my own items because I know my my items are listed correctly." When I sell similar for someone else's items, I have to be very careful because sometimes people put really funky stuff in the item specifics that don't okay. even apply. And I don't want to create a bad listing. Um, so I try to I try to sell similar off my own. But when I have something freak that's different, you know. Susan, uh, that's... We got all I, your pictures again, and listings. I'm, I'm speaking out of school. I just, I know... I, Kind of, enough to be dangerous with list perfectly. Uh, I, I know they have different categories. I think that's the middle and higher tier, or is that for every tier, Susan? Why don't you want you share with us? Because again, I don't use list perfectly. I'm not doing enough to use it. But uh, and again, my understanding is sometimes with the uh, item specifics, you have to do a lot of extra work. So um, I know so people that, that love it. So the list perfectly is obviously the part that's working. It's the eBay that's not taking it. Right. When what she's I'm saying is, we were talking about it. having she's saving the pictures, it and it's not taking it. What we That's said about weird. I have not heard that happening this week at all. Okay. Well, what I'm saying is, she had said that this perfectly saved her because the pictures were uploaded to their website, their their mm -hmm. database, whatever. But I think only certain levels have that. I could be wrong, so that's why I'm asking her. Mm -hmm. Susan, you can contact eBay through eBay for Business and let them know what's going on. And then just kind of wait it out since you do still have your listings and your pictures. Um, you know. Uh, a lot of uh, strange item specifics from other sellers. Okay. So, so Randy says he has that issue too when he yeah. when he sells similar. It's weird. Even ones that have sold, you're like, how did this sell? Their, their item specifics were so crummy, you know, but I don't know. 
I, I can't figure out the, I wish I could figure out eBay's algorithm and YouTube's algorithm. I'd be a happy person. <laughs> I can't figure out either of them. <laughs> I, th I th you know, I, I think I do an okay job on eBay an okay job on uh, YouTube, but, and again, again, I keep telling you guys, you have to list, 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 list. And that, that's, that's, that's on and, me. Um, and not only that though, you need to interact with your client, your customers. Like I know we used to always say, if somebody sends you a stupid message, just ignore it. I don't nope. ignore them anymore nope. because every time you reply, even is thank you, have a nice day. That just shows eBay that you're interacting with the customers. The algorithm you're you don't with have to even say anything that makes sense. You know, when they call me a stupid <laughs> idiot, I just say, thank you, have a nice day. And I move on and I interacted and ding, I get a ding right there. Yay. You know, and so I just, I mean, I have somebody right now that has been bugging me and they, for some reason, they want to come to my house and look at a refrigerator part and they want to know if I'm in Delaware you know, and because I told him, I said, this part will not fit your refrigerator. Please don't buy it. And now they're like, well, are you anywhere near so-and-so Delaware? I'm like, no. Well, where are you? And I just said, you know, thanks. Have a nice day. Like they want to know where I am. They can look on the listing, but I don't ignore them. Now, if they start, you know, harassing me, like the guy that wanted me to, he said, do I have to wear this and model it for you? Then I started um, ignoring, but. Yeah, you know, like I said, Susan, I, you know, sometimes you have a little bit of knowledge, you're dangerous. I, I knew it wasn't like on the basic version that you didn't have the, the pictures uploaded. So she's saying on the business and higher tiers. Okay. With list perfectly. Yeah, you know what's weird about that? You can you can ban a, a, a buyer from purchasing your item, but they can still communicate with you. It's like, yeah, as long as you keep sense. that item up. So what I do when that happens is I end it and I sell similar. And then it, it's over with. They can't reply on the next one. But as long as that item is still up, they can still they can still contact you through it. Now, and I don't know that that well, I don't know that that's actually true. Uh, that's what I, I was think, wondering. Yeah, because I I know I had a Farrah Fawcett shirt when I first started, and I blocked a person, and then later they wanted to buy something else, and they said I'm blocked from buying. So I may be wrong about that. Somebody correct me. I don't get bad information, but my understanding was you can block them as a buyer, but they can still send you messages, even on like. Just yeah, I think that's true. I think that's true. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's correct. Um, and I think that's kind of wrong, but, and I just remember telling the person, you know, I'm sorry, I don't know what happened. I wasn't going to get into it. But <laughs> Sharon says somebody wanted to have her phone number so they could text her. Yeah. Just say yeah, it's against like, eBay's policies. Absolutely, it is. It is against eBay's. So you have to say that's that's a scam, Sharon. That's all that is is a yeah, scam. Yeah, yeah, they don't really want to buy something. Okay, um, they tell me I've I've had that so many times. So, I, I would I would like for eBay to let us be able to. Um, another situation came up with my friend who. Uh, she gave, and I just did this. I gave a refund to a lady because she never got the item and it never tracked. I don't know. My, my postage guide probably didn't scan it or something right. She never got it. So I had to refund her because I couldn't even track it. And um, so if she gets it, <laughs> I want to invoice her for it. She doesn't have to pay it if she doesn't want to, but I would like to invoice for it. And eBay doesn't provide for that at all. You basically have to give them your PayPal address. Which you're really not supposed to do that. Yeah, I don't understand. You know, how they or do if things. you need to, um, somebody's paid and then they decide, oh, I want it shipped priority. Okay, well that's going to be three more bucks. How do you invoice them for three more bucks? You know, doesn't sound like PayPal paid. invoice. And you're not supposed to put an email address you're not in supposed your to, but messages. It's, it's what you got to do it. It's what you got to do. So um, I've had that issue come up before and I've just done it and prayed and said, you know, send me three bucks on this PayPal address. And if eBay, fly, you know, got on to me, I have to just have them read the message. It's just a pain in the butt. But I really wish there was a way we could do that. Um, so right now I'm offering priority on everything as well for that reason, because I had that come up several times. That was one of the things I was, I was going to discuss before you came on. And, and again, uh, guys, I just, you know, I'm going to try to keep it around an hour, but I'm, I'm so thankful because I was 
stumbling upon my words or getting dry mouth. <laughs> it's like <laughs> I'm not a newscaster. I do better interviewing people. But well, um, it's so, been so long since I've seen you. I I rarely get to come in during a live ever. Well, I appreciate you joining us. That was one of the things I was going to bring up about shipping. And and Randy, you're you're my expert with USPS, and Randy does a lot a lot of volume uh, through his business. So. Um, Anyway, he's had tons and tons of issues with USPS, so he's he's switched. Like Randy would probably know the exact number. Yeah. I think it's like eighty five percent of his business he shipped to other carriers because he's had so many problems, and he got ding. He got ding from eBay because they they weren't shipping things. He was shipping things out, you know, in a timely fashion, but, right. but the USPS was losing and not shipping it, and they were dinging him and having him refund the customer and then penalizing his account, even though he shipped them in a timely fashion. Well, Randy. In fourth quarter, dear, if you've got extra padded flat rate envelopes and flat rate envelopes, you can probably sell them to resellers because they're going to be running out if they don't order them now. Well, that's a good idea. So hang that's... on to them if you have them, Randy. That is a pro tip. Let me let me put that in there. Get, every, get, get 30th, your, uh... every 30th of the month right now, I'm ordering like 100 padded flat rates and about 200 of the... Uh, the flat rate envelopes. I doubt I will need that many, but I'm getting them and I'm I just, stashing I just, them. I just got another hundred uh, last month. I, I mean, they, they, they prediction this year is that it's going to be worse than last year at Christmas time. Randy has 10 pounds, Beth. <laughs> so if you're running out. <laughs> yeah. So they're, they're, you know, they're going to charge you more for postage, but you're not going to get any service around Christmas time. Well, that, you know, and I love my postal carrier. It's not his fault, but that's what's going to happen. Guys, be prepared. It, it's it's going it's coming. I used to hear all these all these commercials. Like I don't know if it was on YouTube or I think it was on the radio, and it was USPS saying, "Oh, get the priority, and we're the best, and we ship it out so fast." This and the other. It's like we don't ship out first class very well. <laughs> now you want me to pay for priority? I mean, every two minutes they were advertising. Now it, it might have been like the Odyssey app, which is sort of radio, you know, online app that you play stations or whatever. Every two minutes, USPS like, no, 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 no. Yeah, but anyway, I the know reason I brought that up. The reason I brought that up was uh, Shane Rising Ryan Picker had an issue with the return. Um, he shipped out a some kind of a comic book, and he had it in a, a special like loose slate. Again, I don't know the terminology because I don't sell that stuff. Uh, loose light uh binder or whatever protecting it case and it looked like they they hit it with a pallet jack or something went right through the box smashed into the case broke everything up that was that was the comic so anyway he's tried four different times to get a refund and they shipped it at priority um and this was something i wasn't aware of maybe you guys would know better than i again because i tell you, you use pirate ship he's saying that if you use priority mail through ebay you get a hundred dollars insurance I always thought it was seventy dollars insurance on priority. He says you get a hundred dollars if you do it through eBay. Yeah, yeah. Is that is that true? I think so. Okay. But don't don't thought, listen to me because I don't I know. All seventy dollars. Kind of I don't know. But anyway, yeah. so he's had all kind of issues, and he was saying you know three different times he's done screenshots of the sale. He's he physically bought that you know, the box into the, the USPS, and they denied, denied, denied. Well, I'm just laughing at Randy. He's saying that they promise poor delivery. <laughs> they actually promise poor service. You know, I know they're very frustrated down there at the post office, but, you know, I've had the lady that got so rude with me and told me, you know, she didn't want to scan my packages and that I should get porch pickup. So then I got porch pickup and then I go down there again with like 20 packages. And she said, I told you to get porch pickup. I said, I did. And the guy didn't show up. <laughs> Like, what am I supposed to do? You know, uh, this is my business and you have the scanner and just scan them. You know, it's like, uh. so, so you, I know you they're like frustrated. A, like a, uh, but... a vacation carrier and they, they didn't, they didn't pick them up. Yeah. Yeah. My, my new guy, when, since we moved down to this house, I've used porch pickup. My guy's great. Okay. But when he's not there, and he tells me, he says, I hand them, I put the thing in their note, in their box that says to pick up from you. They never do. And I never know which day it's going to be. Yeah, you don't know. I mean, and, people um, get sick, they go on vacation. Yeah. In the and so that's why I don't have top rated plus, because I can't have one day handling, because if they don't show up, exactly. 
I'm screwed. And if well, I have 14 packages yeah, out fault, there and they don't pick up, I'm going to have 14 late shipments. That's going to ding my account. So I'm at two day handling and that's just the best I can do. You know, because when I go into the office, I go in before the post office opens and I come home after the post office closes. So I can't ship on the day I go to the office. And it's just how it goes. <laughs> so you, ha you have um, to have today handling, yeah. I wish that they would let you have top rated plus if you had met other criteria as well. Like, you know, like if you meet three out of the four instead of you have to have one day or one same day handling and do free returns it is, or is that what it is? Free returns is top rated plus. Yes. If they gave you like four things and you did three of them, then I could do it because I could still do two day handling, but they don't do that. And the handling and time is more important to them. So, okay. So I, I learned something new today. I wasn't aware. And, and I, a... I ship in one day or less. Sometimes I ship the same day. If something comes in at eight in the morning, I ship it that day before it goes out. So I'm, I, my feedback is super fast shipping sooner than, you know, expected. It, it always says that. So. Joni's saying you get top rated sellers get a hundred dollars insurance with priority i was i wasn't aware i never heard that i mean I'm, I'm sure she's right i had never heard that before until i heard from shane and journey's confirming it okay yeah like i'm a, a top rated seller stuff. but i'm not the top rated plus and i would really like, like to have that badge have the free again. Returns and, i yeah. used to have that badge but it was so stressful i thought i was gonna have a heart attack so i just i i finally just said i can't do this anymore you know uh, susan is saying so, that Randy, she's asking you, should she use FedEx uh, too? Um, Randy has, a, has a, again, he, what do you say? He's shipping out 482 packages a day on average. Look at post office and one of it. Let me read this easier if I put, put it up here. So 482 packages one day to my local post office and waited three hours until they scanned them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Randy, Randy says he, he, he can't just drop them off because he doesn't know if they're going to get scanned or when they'll get scanned. Mine didn't. So he literally waits and physically watches them scan every individual package. They take mine to a different location before they even scan them. If I drop them off at the counter. Well, see, that's the I thing with me that too. Out. We have we have regional. So all my all my carriers come out of a regional postal. They don't come out of a local post office anymore. Mm -hmm. and, that, and then there's a regional distribution center. So God mm -hmm. knows when that stuff's going to get scanned. So I, mm -hmm. I physically go in the post office and get scanned. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. and that's a lot of packages. I can see where it would take that long. Cause sometimes like when I go up there to get them scanned, their internet is not real great and they have to scan it several times before it comes up. If you had to do that 482 times, that would take a while. And Three I always hours. let people, I always let people go in front of me. Like I let them scan a few and then I stand to the side and I let people go in front of me, you know, but that one day she goes, your whole, you know, you can't bring all these packages in here. And I'm like, and I was the only one in there. I said, nobody's waiting. Like if somebody comes up, I'll let them come in. You know, no, you can't bring these this many packages. And I'm like, I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to respond to that because I'll get in trouble. <laughs> They're getting this, their job to scan your packages. I, that, I had once where I went like two towns over. I had like a doctor's appointment. So it was just more convenient for me to go two towns over instead of making a special trip to yeah. my local post office. I've I went done like that. two towns over to the post office and they wouldn't take my package. They're arguing with me. You're right. supposed to ship that through your local post office. Right. I said, it's priority they mail. They used it to tell matter. you that eBay would uh, ding you for that, but that's not true because if I had a, an, if I had an offer accepted and then they didn't pay right away and I had to go on vacation, I always took the package with me in case they paid. And I always mailed it from wherever I was. And I never had any problems. eBay never dinged me. I, um, I'm really looking forward to this immediate payment. But like I said on my last live stream or two weeks ago, I am concerned that we're going to get a lot of cancellations for pocket purchases and for people changing their mind and we have to pay for that processing fee and um so but be you know i hope i'm wrong but i predict that we will be getting a lot of cancellations because especially at the beginning when people are used to being able to wait to pay and what then they realize purchase what, what do you mean by that well like people always tell you i accidentally bought this i have uh, you know, okay. my so kid got my phone purchase. it is true because i have pocket purchased once before and um i was copying well, a unicorn butt dial on your plush. Phone. yeah i was copying <laughs> a unicorn plush when i was in goodwill 
and I was on somebody's listing and then I put my phone in my pocket. And when I got home, I realized I had purchased three unicorn plushes for $27. So I obviously did not lock my phone and I hit purchase. So I messaged the seller and I said, look, I'm a seller too. And I never believed in this before, but I really did accidentally buy this item. I was comping this unicorn and would you be so kind to cancel the sale? And she did. But I, I imagine we're going to get some of that until buyers are used to that money coming immediately out of their their credit card or bank account. So absolutely. But th but I'm excited that they're doing it. I'm so glad. Uh, it's been a long time coming. Easier for me to pull these up on the black background of them. I mean, okay. Adam, we were telling eBay at eBay Open in 2018 we wanted this. That was three years ago. Your yeah, large distribution ship as far as the region USBS and they still mess up. Yep. What's Randy saying? Uh such small print. I'm gonna I'm not sure I'm gonna have my new monitor. I, I did get a new that's monitor. That's why I'm week. getting really close to the screen too. I don't have my glasses. <laughs> it's like I'm, I, I got this I got this right big here, monitor, but I, I gotta clean up my dining room where I have all this my eBay stuff and I gotta yeah. clean up the dining room table and I'm gonna set up my new I, I purchased the monitor. I told you guys I was okay. Like, trying to that up, makes up sense. My YouTube game. Yeah, they're just giving you a hard time. Yeah. They're just giving you a hard time at the post office. That you know. Why do I keep getting a low battery? I don't know. Uh oh, we lost Adam. Hello, everyone. <laughs> He'll be back. He's trying. Yeah, I used to go to a post office farther away as well and i loved it it was a great post office and then all of a sudden it got bad you know i don't know what happened it was like so awesome and then it it went sour so now i'm back to my original post office so and then i'm thinking about um getting my postal work, uh, carrier something really special because he's just awesome his name's martin and um he he's just amazing Scared of what they say over large shipments. I also heard, Randy, that um, sometimes when you send things FedEx and you weigh them, and then even if you take them down to the FedEx office, that later on FedEx charges you for higher weight than what it than what you originally weighed it as. So I don't know if that's true or not. I I had to ship a um, a refrigerator part last week, and um, the post office wanted forty four dollars to ship it, and I only charged eleven ninety two to the customer to ship it. And they wanted forty four dollars, so I was able to do FedEx home for twenty two dollars and something. But the thing is, it was going to take longer FedEx home than it was priority. But I went ahead and shipped it FedEx home, and um, hoping that they didn't get upset that it was going to be a couple of days late. But FedEx saved me in that case. But I don't, I don't use FedEx much unless the customer requests it. Cause like I'm, I'm sending stuff in little poly mailers. Like, do you send poly mailer things, Randy FedEx, little tiny things that weigh eight ounces. Do you send those FedEx as well? He'll be back in a minute. If your postal desk person is giving you a hard time, ask to speak with the postmaster. Um, yeah, I mean, I've, I've talked to the postmaster at that other one. They didn't do diddly squat. Um, and I've talked to the, um, manager and she did have a a talk with the carriers because the carrier told me oh yeah she sat us down and she talked about this but it still happens and um the last time i went back to complain to her um they had me stand outside the door for 20 minutes outside the little dutch door and then after 20 minutes they came back and said she wasn't available and i was really mad because i waited 20 minutes for them to tell me oh she's not here I think she was there. She just didn't want to talk to me. So, so, uh, no first class. So you still use post office for those. Okay. I apologize guys. I, I, I kept getting an error message. Like my battery is low. I was like, how's my battery low? Apparently I stepped on my cable when I pulled it where the power cord goes into the, the plug in port. <laughs> so it's like... mm -hmm. Um, yeah, Sharon, I do at my post office have, sometimes there's a lady at a little kiosk and she'll scan my packages and I don't have to stand in line. 
and she has like these huge nails and I always compliment her on her nails, even though I don't like them. I just say, you have the most <laughs> beautiful nails. And she's like, thank you. And she's just scanning away. You know, if you compliment them, um, you know, they're sometimes nicer. So. Well, it's the old saying you get, you get more, uh, oh, that's a super yeah. say. you get more flies with honey than, than vinegar. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. You know, I talk about that, you know, when I, when I talk about thrifting or talk about um, yard sales or garage sales, you know, I talked about that when I had Bobby on last week. Strict conversation up with the people at the yard sale, garage sale. Hey, how you doing? Nice morning. I'm glad you're having your yeah. yard sale. Yada, yada, yada. You know, can't hurt to be nice. Maybe they'll give you yeah, a deal. The Maybe one, they won't give you a deal. But The it's one lady that was so mean to me, well, one of them told me to call the, she wrote down the I don't know, FAA or something. I don't remember what she wrote me some uh, office of consumer affairs. She told me to call there if I had a problem. Really? Um, but but <laughs> oh the one God. that kept getting on to me and telling me they need to get postal pickup. One time I was second in line and I heard her talking to the lady about her children that were going to college. She had twins. So I kind of just eavesdropped on their conversation. And then when I got up to the window, I said, oh, I heard you talking about your kids. What are they majoring in and where are they going to school? And I mean, I just got really personal with her. Not your and first she was radio. all on it. And she was just scanning and scanning and talking about her twins and that was the only time she's ever really been nice to me, you know, is I had to, had her talking about her kids. So, it, it, Michelle, well, I'm going to have to get off of here. My wife is home. Well, and, I'm, I'm um, getting ready to, to, I just want to comment, Beth, thank you. I just want to talk to a couple people in the it chat. It was thank great you seeing coming. you. Appreciate it. Don't forget to check out Beth's channel. I'll list it when everything uploads. I'll list Beth's channel in the uh, description below. Reseller Rowboat. Contact Beth. Thank you, Beth. Appreciate hey. it. Bye-bye. See ya. Anyway, guys, uh, appreciate some new people popping in the chat. Collecting Chaos is in the chat. Dawn, we appreciate you being in the chat. Uh, Michelle, I agree with you 100%. I never understood that with, with the post office. It's like they have a nice job and you know, a nice pension and benefits. And um, I don't know. It is, it is what it is. But uh, like, like, I, like I told my story earlier, when I was trying to ship that priority package two towns over, you're arguing with me. I waited in line for like 25 minutes and the lady didn't want to take it. She goes, I said, <laughs> I said, well, let me talk to you to the, to the uh, postmaster. I said, you're going to take it. <laughs> so she did take it. And, but you know, it is what it is. So anyway, guys, uh, like I said earlier, I'm always looking for people to come on the show. Uh, so any of you guys in the chat, um, like again, reach out to me through my social media. Uh, a couple of things I want to remind you again, it helps, helps, helps the YouTube algorithm. We're talking about the, eBay algorithm, Cassini. Uh, if you make sure that you, you click on the like button and the uh, if you leave a comment afterwards, um, that helps. Uh, if, you're, if you're nice enough to share the video, that helps too. But again, every little bit helps the channel. Um, one thing I wanted to bring up, a couple things. Uh, you can help me. Like I told you guys how to buy, how to buy a new monitor. So eventually I won't be squinting so much trying to read the, the, the print. I got a larger monitor, so it'll help me when I'm doing uh, YouTube shows. I got a 32 inch monitor i got um someone recommend an lg so they had a deal on lg so i got an lg i have to hook that up to my computer that i bought six months ago but i had a bunch of expenses so i didn't want to buy the monitor yet but anyway long story short uh if you guys are getting any kind of value out of this please consider i have uh, paypal buy me a coffee and uh randy my moderator is generous enough uh you can buy yourself a coffee uh randy has a website where he um sells coffee spices and and candies and things uh when you register on randy's site and the, the link is in the description below if you were to purchase anything from randy if you put ae next to the description or you should say next to your your name when you register randy's kind enough to to help me out and uh, pay me a little uh commission at no cost to you and i also have amazon affiliate links so anyway guys just trying to offset some of my expenses it's, it's not cheap doing youtube and we all know it's not cheap doing the reselling so anyway Always looking for somebody to come on the show next week, guys. Going to reach out to a bunch of resellers. And I'm going to, I'm going to hop over to uh, Bobby, the Cap Guys chat now. Uh, Bobby's a good man. He was on the show last week. So we're going to hop over. If you want to join me over there, uh, Bobby would appreciate it. And I would appreciate it. Okay, guys. See you next week at 7 p.m. Eastern.